all right okay welcome back welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to have a look at laravel 11 which was released last week um yeah it, it's quite exciting we we are living in an exciting time for php um so yeah first of all it's a minimal requirement of php 8.2 and it's actually called the slim version of uh, Laravel um, because they had a lot of cleanup work uh, under the hood. So actually let's start off with installing a new application and we'll go through all the changes. All right, here we go. All right, so I have my warp open right here and I'm going to start off with uh, a new Laravel project, Laravel new Laravel 11 test. The first thing that you're going to notice is, well, we already had these uh, awesome prompts uh, so I'm going to go with no starter kit but the first thing you notice that is different is we have we now have pest as a default testing framework previously it was PHP unit but now default is pest which is a cool thing next up you it asks you if you want to create a repository and for this case I'm going to say no afterwards it's going to install all the needed files uh, for you just like a normal Composer install. Um, but after that, it's going to ask you, hey, which database would you like your application to use? Normally, this should, would have been the MySQL database, but now by default, it prompts for SQLite, which is kind of, yeah, I think it's a cool thing because I'm fond of using SQLite, certainly for smaller applications, but you can change it along the way as well. So let's go for SQLite here and that will install the needed things. And there we go. All right, so let's build something awesome. All right, so let's navigate to the new uh, application. So that is Laravel 11 test.test .test because I'm serving it with herd, previously valet. Uh, you notice that we have a new homepage, which kind of looks very neat, right? Um, so documentation, Lara cost, Laravel news, and the vibrant ecosystem. Um, yeah, it's 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 really good looking uh, as usual. Uh, yeah, we're we're getting used to that, right? All right, so let me open up Visual Studio Code here. Um, whoops, it also opened on a different tab. Let's navigate to that. Here we go. Um, all right, so basically, this is the new slim version of your Laravel application. So let's go through it, right? You have the app folder which is HTTP and it only has a controller folder in there with just controller. Models, providers, you can see it already, a lot of files are missing. Bootstrap, app and providers, this is for later. Config is also missing a few files and so on. Like routes is missing the API route folder, uh, sorry, file. So you can guess it already, we don't have API capabilities at this moment. So yeah, what what yeah, what what should we do, right? Um, we're going to install that. So uh, let's navigate to the project. There we go. PHP Artisan um, install API. There we go. And it will also ask us to run a migration. Um, I won't do that at this point because yeah, I don't I don't need it, right? All right, there we go. Uh, and also prompting uh, Laravel Sanctum has API token trait should be added to the user model. This is something that we had to do in, a pre in some previous versions of Laravel, um, but we now need to do it as well. As you can see here, we uh, didn't have Sanctum installed. It installed Sanctum as well for us. Um, that's also new. All right, so in the user model, just head over to the uses string here, has API tokens, whoops, API tokens, there we go, and it auto imports Laravel Sanctum has API tokens. And you're good to go. It also installed this very brand new routes API.php file for us that we are used to. And the cool thing here is in app, uh, sorry, in Bootstrap uh, app, it also added the API routing file to this file. All right, let's save that. That was API, 
Now we don't have the uh, API by default, but we can install it whenever we want. Okay, so um, let's see. Middleware. Normally in HTTP, app HTTP, we also have a middleware folder. In this case, middleware folder is missing, um, but we can still in uh, bootstrap app.php change things to the previous uh, middleware. Um, for example, uh, the redirect. So, sorry, redirect. Um, if authenticated, yeah, there we go. Redirect using. This is actually accepting a closure request. And normally, yeah, well, we, sh we had the redirect um, default route that we had in the previous version of Laravel. And this is also accepting a route and you can name it whatever, right? Home or dashboard. It doesn't matter what you put in there. And this is how you can override the previous um, functionality of the redirect if authenticated. Um, and this should also be capital R. Yeah. Whoops. There we go. All right. So that's, that's it. This is how you can adjust um, your middleware that you had before. But what if we want to create our own middleware, right? We can still, we can still do this with artisan, PHP artisan, art, artisan, uh, make middleware and let's call it whoops with a capital T test middleware it successfully created in app HTTP middleware test middleware.php and if we head over to the application again in HTTP now we have a middleware folder with only our created middleware okay fine um, but we still need to register it right and this is also going to be in bootstrap app Sorry, I'm missing a semicolon here. There we go. And in Bootstrap app, we can add uh, middleware, middleware web to the web. Um, we have our tests middleware class. Middleware class. There we go. And it also auto imports it for you. And that's it. Now, whenever we want to uh, have this middleware in action, it's registered over here. All right, next up is providers. As you can see, we have a providers.php and this has an app service provider in there. But what if we need to make our own provider, right? We can also do this with artisan, like PHP artisan artisan make provider and let's call it um, test provider there we go and this created a provider in app providers test provider there we go so this should be in here providers this is our app service provider but yeah we can't add it to like the bootstrap app file how what, what's going on how, how do we actually register this new provider well it is automatically added to the providers.php file for us if we use it use it with uh, artisan uh, but we can also but we can also create our own providers if you want to but we need to make sure that we also add it to the array here all right next up is config um, you can see that we are missing a few files like view.php. Um, this sanctum file here was also added when we installed our API. It's not in there by default. But what if, if you want to change something to the, to the view.php? Well, don't panic. You can also uh, publish them with uh, artisan. So php artisan um, publish, sorry, uh, config publish there we go and this will actually prompt us hey wh which configuration file do you want to publish right so we can select them like if we select views well the views file will be exported for us and is available here and we can adjust everything we want to do in here but for convenience reasons they yeah actually removed a few of those config files 
to have a cleaner setup, a slimmer setup um, as we have right now. Okay, so what about scheduled tasks? Uh, well, you can see we are missing the app console here. This is quite strange. So we don't have app console and our commands file. We also don't have the kernel where we register all our um, yeah, our scheduled tasks, right? Um, we can now do that in our routes file, console.php. And thankfully, we now have like this awesome new facade schedule, the schedule facade, where we can add like uh, a command and we want to yeah, run, uh, for example, uh, inspire, just like uh, on top. Uh, and we want to do that uh, like daily or every five minutes like that. And I still need to like import this. Whoops. Import. Whoops. It's the facade. All right. I imported the wrong thing. It's the support facade. All right, there we go. And if we now run uh, PHP artisan artisan uh, schedule list. Whoops, I did a typo there. Artisan. Uh, what did? Uh, what, uh, oh, of course, every five minutes. It's every five minutes, right? There we go refresh i don't need to refresh now we can see uh, it's yeah due in one minute um and there's also another one and this is actually another way of using the schedule right now it's like with artisan command do something um and then chain hourly or uh daily after that and if you run inspire uh, schedule list again it's instead of 60, uh, 30 sec 36 minutes, it's three hours from now. All right, this is actually pretty cool. We don't need a kernel. We don't need a lot of mumbo jumbo. It's just a s easy to use schedule facade. All right, so the last thing I'm going to show you is like um, the, there are some new artisan commands available for us. So PHP artisan, PHP artisan, and just hit enter and you will get a list of all the things you can do with artisan. Um, and if we go to like the make section here, we now have like the possibility to make classes. Uh, we also have the possibility to make, uh, where is it? Uh, pom, 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 pom. Uh, enum. We can now make enums. We can also make interfaces. So let's, let's take a look at this, right? PHP artisan make enum and I'm going to um, yeah make like uh, what should we make what is an enum status there we go and it actually created app enum for us let's go to app and we now have the status, which is an enum status. You can actually also do that with um, like enums slash, and then it's all folderized in enums. You can also create PHP artisan make, um, interface, and let's call it test interface for now. Oh, whoops, test interface. There we go. And I should also use some kind of folderization for that. But you get the picture. We can now create like classes, enums, interfaces, and it will use the needed stub files for that. And when we um, would like to, uh, let me check. PHP artisan stub publish 
there we go it publishes the stops there we go boom 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 and in stops we now also have like the class stop in here the enum stop which we can change and things like that so yeah so there are a few changes here and there right cost um well mainly the class enum and interface are like the the main new ones that i uh, that i like to use all right there is also one other new thing that we need to talk about that is laravel reverb you might have heard of it um uh let me quickly open up the website here there we go it's laravel reverb it's like a websocket server uh for laravel applications which is kind of awesome um i will create another video about this but yeah be sure to play around with it it's super awesome it's only one artisan command away and you have a full-fledged websocket server in your application that is like all right i hope you learned something from this and i will see you in one of the next videos take care bye bye and like and subscribe thank you